Here we're gonna look at a nice viewer suggested problem. So I really like getting suggestions from you guys to do problems. Sometimes I don't always see them because I'm like quite busy with other stuff, but keep sending me your suggestions. Okay, so this is from the 2019 Indian Math Olympiad and it is question three. So we wanna suppose that M and N are positive integers and they are distinct. And then our goal is to prove that the GCD of MN plus the GCD of M plus one, N plus one, plus the GCD of M plus two, N plus two, is less than or equal to two times the absolute value of the difference of M and N plus one. And then we have a final question, which is when is there equality? So in other words, when do we not have a strict less than here? So maybe there's just one big hint for this, and that is remember all your properties of the GCD. So if you're well-versed in math contest, contests, and especially number theory problems from math contests, then you should have half a dozen or more properties of the GCD at the ready. But we're actually gonna start this video off by proving some. But that's my hint. If you wanna give this problem a go with this hint, go ahead and do that. Now we're gonna prove some of these properties. So like I said before, we're gonna prove a couple of simple properties just for completeness. So we're gonna start by showing that the GCD of AB is equal to the GCD of A comma A minus B. And this is fairly straightforward, but I think it's good practice if you haven't seen this kind of stuff. So let's move, go ahead and look at the proof. So let's suppose that the GCD of AB equals D. But now notice that that tells us that D divides A and D divides B. But then the fact that D divides A and D divides B, that tells us that D must divide A minus B. But now the fact that D divides A and A minus B, that tells us that D divides the GCD of A comma A minus B. Great. And then next what we wanna do is suppose that the GCD of A comma A minus B is equal to maybe D prime, but that'll tell us that D prime divides A and D prime divides A minus B. But then that means that D prime divides the sum or maybe the difference of A minus A minus B. But A minus A minus B is B. So that means D divides B. But now we have D prime divides A and D prime divides B, but that means that D prime divides the GCD of AB, but we call that D. So notice what we've got here. We've got D divides this guy right here, which we called D prime. And then we have D prime divides D, but the only way for that to happen is for both of them to be the same. In other words, D equals D prime, but that's exactly this property. Now we've got our next little proposition, which is that if the GCD of A with B is equal to D and that's not equal to one, then the GCD of A plus or minus one with B is between one and B over two. Okay, so we're gonna focus on the A plus one version of this, although the A minus one version will be pretty similar. So let's go ahead and see how this goes. So let's suppose that the GCD of A with B is equal to D, not equal to one. So that tells us that D is gonna divide A and D must divide B, so it's a common divisor. And then by definition of divisibility, that means that A equals D times M and B equals D times N for some N and M. And then by definition of the GCD, we know that we can take these uh, M's and N's so that they are relatively prime. So we've got the GCD of M and N is one. If the GCD of M and N were not one, then D would not be the greatest common divisor. It would just be a common divisor. Okay, good. Now next, we wanna notice that D is not equal to one. That tells us that D is bigger than or equal to two. But if D is bigger than or equal to two, that tells us that N is less than or equal to B over two. 
Okay, that's actually more important than it might seem. Now we're ready to launch into our goal. So let's go ahead and suppose that we've got a common divisor, we'll call it D prime, of A plus one and B, like that. But notice that this means that D prime is going to divide DM plus one and D prime is going to divide DN. But what we wanna do is cancel out those kind of bigger terms. So I'm gonna multiply all of this by N, multiply all of this by M, and then take the difference. Notice that maintains divisibility. So we'll get D prime divides this object minus that object, but that means that D prime divides N. But that tells us that D prime is less than or equal to N. So divisibility gives us that kind of ordering. But up here we showed that N was less than or equal to B over two. So that means that D prime is less than or equal to B over two. But that means any divisor of A plus one and B is less than or equal to B over two, including the greatest common divisor. But then that finishes this claim. Okay, so now that we've got these properties proven, let's go ahead and look at the solution. Okay, now we're ready to launch into our solution. So we wanna look at this object over here, the GCD of MN plus the GCD of M plus one N plus one plus the GCD of M plus two N plus two. And I first wanna notice that without loss of generality, we can assume that M is bigger than N. And then just look at the symmetric versions of this solution for M less than N at the end. Okay, so next we can also notice that the GCD of M with N is the same thing as the GCD of M with M minus N by our first property that we proved. The GCD of M plus one with N plus one is equal to the GCD of M plus one with m plus one minus n plus one, but the great thing about that is that the ones cancel out and we just get m minus n. And then finally, the GCD of m plus two and then n plus two is equal to the GCD of m plus two with m minus n. Okay, great. So it looks like this m minus n is gonna like play a really important role here. And then also notice that this term right here is in fact m plus one minus one. And then this term right here is in fact m plus one plus one. Great. So now let's go ahead and say that this is equal to D. So it's gotta have some common divisor or greatest common divisor. We might as well set it equal to D. And we know the biggest that D can be is M minus N. So we've got that this is less than or equal to M minus N. Great. Now we wanna launch into kind of the final part of this. So we've got the GCD of M with N plus GCD M plus one, N plus one, plus GCD, M plus two, N plus two. So that's equal to the GCD of M with M minus N plus GCD of M plus one with M minus N. And then finally plus GCD of M plus two with M minus N. But now we wanna start applying our second property from the last board, but we can only do that when D is not equal to one. So let's split this up into two cases. So the first case is if D is equal to one. Well, that's gonna make this object here in the middle equal to one, and I should say I've got a less than or equal to here. But then the GCD of M with M minus N, well, that's definitely less than or equal to M minus N. And then the GCD of M plus two with M minus N, that's also less than M minus N. But notice that this object right here adds up to the right form of our inequality, keeping in mind that we don't need absolute values in this case. So in fact, if D equals one, then we're okay.
All right, now let's look at the case when D is not equal to one. So if D is not equal to one, we can apply that property on the last board, thinking about this M as M plus one minus one, and this M plus two as M plus one plus one, which tells us that we've got a D in the middle by our assumption, and then on either side, we've got something that is less than or equal to D over two. But now keeping in mind that D is less than or equal to M minus N, this is going to be less than or equal to two times M minus N. But that's clearly less than or equal to two times M minus N minus one. Okay, so that clears up the inequality. Now we're ready to look for the cases when we have equality. Okay, so we just got done proving that the GCD of M and N plus the GCD of M plus one, N plus one, plus the GCD of M plus two, N plus two, was less than or equal to this object. So we've got two times the absolute value of M minus N plus one, and that's if the GCD of this middle term here is equal to one. But then we've got this inequality two times absolute value of m minus n if that GCD is not equal to one. So obviously we can never have equality with this goal thing over here if the GCD is not equal to one. So for equality, we're going to need the GCD of m plus one with n plus one to be equal to one. But you know, notice that's the same thing as the GCD of m plus one with m minus n must be equal to one. You know, kind of like we described on the previous board, we used this calculation quite a bit. But then I also wanna notice that in order to get equality, we're going to need this guy right here and this guy right here to have a GCD of M minus N or absolute value of M minus N. We actually did it for the case when M was bigger than N so we didn't need the absolute value. And we're gonna continue to do that, although by symmetry we can include the absolute value in there. But now these restrictions are gonna give us the following equality. So we need the GCD of M with M minus N to equal M minus N and we need the GCD of M plus two with M minus N to equal M minus N. Keeping in mind that we've used throughout this problem that this GCD is the same thing as having M N in here, and this GCD is the same thing as having M plus two, N plus two in here. Okay, so this is actually gonna give us quite the restriction on possible values of M minus N. Let's maybe see how that goes. Okay, so let's notice that this means that M minus N is going to divide M and M minus N is going to divide M plus two. Okay, but then that means that M minus N is going to divide M plus two minus M. In other words, M minus N will divide two but if M minus N divides two, that tells us that M minus N equals either one or two, because two is a prime, so its only divisors are one and two. So that immediately gives us a condition on equality, and the condition on the equality is like this. So we have M, M plus one, M, M plus two, and then m plus one m or m plus two m just by symmetry. So it's those like four ordered pairs that give us equality over here. And that's a good place to stop.